Welcome to the next episode in the PISD GAF Train series. Our next stop is the fourth stop, which is Google Sheets. We're going to do a quick introduction to Sheets. The first thing is to create a new Google Sheet. You would go to New and then select the Google Sheets app, or you can open an existing Sheets file by clicking on it in your drive. The file menu allows different options. You can share from here, make a copy, move to a different folder, put it in the trash. You can import. You can see your revision history, spreadsheet settings. You can download it as different file types, and you can publish to the web. The edit menu allows you to cut, copy, paste, undo, redo. You can also delete rows, co columns, and certain values. The view menu allows you to freeze certain rows or columns. You can add the grid lines or take them away. It also will show you the formula bar. The insert menu allows you to insert rows, columns. You can insert comments, different functions, charts, images, links, forms, and drawings. The chart editor will come up and then you can choose what type of chart you want to create. You will need certain data highlighted before you can create a chart. You might want to insert a drawing when you want to format text and images or shapes within each other and you want it to look a certain way and drawings are great for doing that. If you want to insert an image, you can upload your from your computer. You can also search your Google Drive. So you click on Google Drive and then you select which folder you want to look in or you can just search from here. If you Click on search. It will take you to a Google search box, and all of the results will be labeled for commercial reuse with modification. So you can use them and modify them as needed without breaking copyright. The format menu will allow you to decide how your numbers look, whether you want percents, time, currency, font size and different formatting of the font, bold, italics, underline. You can also align things or merge your cells or wrap your text from here. The data column is where you will sort your data or name your ranges or protect sheets and ranges from here. In the tools menu, you can create a form, you can check your spelling, you can do notification rules, you can choose if you want to be notified when changes are made or when a user submits a form. When you create a form in Google, all of the responses can be shown in a Google Sheet. So if you do a form, then you go to the response Google Sheet, and you can decide when a user submits a form that it emails you right away, or you just get a daily email saying how many people submitted. The add-ons menu adds functionality to your document. Flubero is a great one that will actually grade responses in a form for you. GMAT is great for math teachers to help you with type out those complex equations and have them look exactly like you want them to. The toolbar at the top kind of combines some of these more popular features, such as formatting your numbers, your fonts. You can also merge cells, wrap your text, your alignment. You can insert functions. You can com add comments. You can put in charts and images. If you're going to comment, all you have it's also got the comments button at the top of the page, and then it opens a box where you can comment. From the share menu, you can choose certain people that can then edit, comment, or just view your page, or you can use the link. And when you're doing link sharing, make sure that it's on the specific one that you want. So whether you want it on just for Prosper or you want it public on the web. Now, if I look in my drive, I did a current technology usage form for Reynolds teachers. And all of the responses are in a Google Sheet. So if I open the Google Sheet, it was anonymous, so you can't see anyone's name on here. But there's a lot of different things that you can do. So one of the things I wanted was to be notified. So when I went to Tools, I made sure to go to Notification Rules, and I will receive a notification when the form is submitted. I can also then choose which questions. All the questions are labeled at the top. And I can choose which questions that I want to see the data in a different way. So I want to chart certain data. 
So I chose tech use. I had to go to the data menu and I had to name some ranges. So my tech use would be column C. So if I go to column C, I asked how does everyone classify themselves, whether they were expert, proficient, or a novice. So what I did was I selected column C, and then I went to data, and I wanted to name that range. And when you name it, it says everything in C, and then you name it what you want, and then you click done. Then I created, I went to add sheet, and what I did was I had to exactly put what the answer choices were. And then I had to insert a function, the count if, and then parentheses, I had to put the title of the named range that I created, so tech use. And then I had the answer start in A1. The answers for expert were right here in A1. So then it told me that in that form, three people on our campus said they're an expert. So then with proficient, I inserted the function and all I changed was A2 because it's in cell A2. And then I did the same thing for novice. So I select the data and go to insert chart. And then it, you can choose what type of chart you want and I chose a pie chart. And then it did it for me and then I can insert it in. I can use column A as labels, which is what it did because there was only one column of labels available. And you can use, it says row one is header, so you can change the way it looks, and then you just insert it in. And you can decide what type that you want, and then you just insert it in. And I did that with different questions to get visuals of the data to show to the staff. This has been a quick introduction to Google Sheets.